Right over the bed, over the bed. Nigga, I gotta be safe. Let's get to sports talk. Played the Raptors, and we suspected that maybe that Toronto nightlife would cut into James Harden's performance a little bit. But it wasn't just that that limited him. See how they doubled him? They did a new gimmicky defense against James Harden. Just double him right when he gets over the half court line. He only had 23 points and just three assists, which seemed to work. However, the Rockets did end up with the victory. Jalen, what do you think about this strategy against James Harden to just double him when he gets over the half court line? Yeah, that strategy worked. As long as he put up some points. He put up 23, that's enough. And now Westbrook, add on to that. His teammates, tucking it on, add on to that. Macklemore, they add on to that. That's the way you can win. As long as he didn't struggle, he only had five or six points. As long as he put up just the amount of points to be able to help this team win, even though they double teamed him all night, 23 was good enough for the Rockets to get a win. So it all depends on the personnel. So in particular, if you have an athletic guy that you use to play a small ball four a lot, like Pascal Siakam, he could be a double guy and a rotation guy. Serge Ibaka could be a guy that does it, depending on the situation. Players like Powell, OG Ananobi could possibly do it. I'm not upset with getting the hands, getting the ball out of the hands of the best player. The key is the rotation. And yeah. so this is why you add Russell Westbrook, because now he's a guy you swinging the ball to. And he's so fast, he's knifing through the defense when he decides to attack, as opposed to selling for jump shots, because he's basically missed almost every jump shot he's taken the last handful of games. But when he's slashing, you know all of a sudden look up, and he got a triple-double, he's making some plays, and it's enough to win. And Macklemore, you got to give him a lot of credit, resurrecting himself in Houston. Yeah, McLemore had 28 points, which is somewhat a function of them doubling Harden. But also, you mentioned Westbrook. West I just said that. As long as the guys around you contribute, will help you win the games. McLemore had 28. Harden had 23. Westbrook had a triple-double. As long as the guys around you are putting up at least a good amount of points, to help you win against an NBA champion team is good enough to win. That's all that matters as long as your supporting cast is there to pick up the slack. When they're double teaming you, as long as they step up to the plate and help you get this win. Has been not that efficient of late. Sure, he had a triple double, but he has missed. 43 shots over the last two games. He was 7 of 30 and 7 of 27 last night. Jalen, he can't he can't keep doing this, right? <laughs> I got an important question for you, and I know you don't like follow up questions. I don't like follow up questions. When you say <laughs> when you say he can't do this, do you mean he can't continue to miss this many shots? Yes. Or do you mean he can't many can he or do you mean he can't continue to take this many shots when he's missing? It's same thing. Like you can't he can't keep putting up 30 <laughs> shots a night and only hitting seven of them. Like that is not that is not how NBA basketball works in today's day and age. I cannot I feel like he'll have a long year because this ain't his team anymore. Even though he the next superstar with James Harden, this ain't his team no more. He's so used to having a basketball in his hands, it's different. When James Harden mostly controlling the basketball a lot, it's something he got to get used to. He used to have the basketball in his hand being ball dominant. When he had his own team, OKC, the basketball in his hand a lot. Like, he still got the basketball here, but it's something different. It's something he got to get used to. Not being his team. <laughs> Imagine that Mike D'Antoni walks away from this game and says, don't worry, we got to win. You go ahead and miss 20 more shots next next time we go out there. <laughs> you need him to stay aggressive. I actually disagree with you. And if you really? look up at the end of the season and he's shooting 35%, that's just what it's got to be. There was a year Allen Iverson shot 38 39%, and he actually won MVP that year. He wasn't so, playing with James Harden. I need Russell Westbrook to continue to be aggressive. 
he's aggressive. Well, we all have certain players. We, we have certain players that we pick as our guys. And one of the guys that you picked early on was Rui Achimura, the rookie for the Wizards. The Wizards got a big game from Achimura, and they got a win against the 76ers. The 76ers had 21 turnovers in a game against a team that they should have easily handled. Jalen, was this more positive for the Wizards? Look what you just said. That's the big question right there. 21 turnovers will lose you a game. You can't turn over the basketball that much. And this will be the outcome. Yeah, they should have beat the Wizards, but the 21 turnovers are points. They left off the board because there were too many turnovers that turned into points for the Wizards to be able to win this game. Turnovers will determine everything in a game, in any sport. And that was the outcome. The team they should have beat, beat them because too many turnovers in that game. Or was it more negative for the Sixers? As your brother, I'm going to give you a guy. Oh. Because you ignore the San Antonio Spurs so much, you didn't get a chance to really appreciate this guy. And Bertans Bert started Hans, off that game on Bert fire. <laughs> Yeah, six he threes. Shoot like, he shoots like 66% from three this year. It's crazy. He's the best <laughs> shooter in the game. Forget <laughs> Steph Curry. Bertans is that guy. <laughs> so you can draft him on your squad and put him up on the wall if you want to. But let me say something else funny about him. So when you hit six threes in the first quarter, that's the gift and the curse. Because if somebody that was watching that game, let me tell you what else he did. He shot a couple of air balls, too. He <laughs> continued to be aggressive, and I, I was dying laughing. I appreciated that. But let's talk about Hachimura for a second. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're going against a front line of Horford and Embiid, for him to play the way he did, to play as physical as he did and hold it down, Joel Embiid was turnover prone. He had eight turnovers yep. in the game. So now, many Horford for barely man. made double figures. Absolutely. I want to give the Wizards a lot of credit because they're a team that's shown that they can score. They just can't stop anybody. They put up they 119 really against the Philadelphia 76ers. They have one of the highest rated offenses in the league, but they just cannot stop anybody. Until the Wizards figure out everything with their team, even though they pick up this win against Philly, their defense need to get better. They can't stop anyone for scoring. But they got the win. Once they learn how to play defense better, and and they'll be a good team. Only they ain't good right now is still missing John Wall. It's their big piece. They need to come back. He been out two years now. And that's hurting his team because that's a big hole right there. They don't know where his return table is. And, like, if you're not paying close attention, that 6, 7, 8 spot in the East is just up for anybody. Like, anybody could take that. The Wizards could, could mess around and put together a nice little run and end up in the playoffs really quick. What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget 